Go-kart wet setup the easy way. Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Over the last few weeks, we've had some great questions from the internet. And one of the questions was, what do we do in the wet and how do we set up our go-karts? Now we've had this question over and over again, so I thought today we'll jump on the topic. If you like this video and find it helpful and would like to support our channel, please feel free to go to our website and buy a t-shirt or sign up to our YouTube membership where you can make a small donation that makes a big difference. Okay, so the first thing that you could do when it rains is obviously you wanna put on some wet weather tires. Now the wet weather tires come in all different brands and compounds. Now there is usually a compound for your specific class. Now, if you're not racing in a specific class and you're just racing for fun and you know cutting, cutting laps as they call it, um, you wanna get the softest compound tires you can to get the, you know, obviously the best effect in the wet. Now the wet weather tires run all different pounds depending on where you are and how much water falls on the track. So in the torrential rain, so there's standing water all over the track, it's currently raining as you're driving out the grid or about to drive out onto the track. Whenever these conditions exist, you can pump your tire pressures up in the 20 to 30 pound range. Now this is gonna change a little bit for maybe a really soft compound tire or someone with a preference of less than 20 pounds. But from what I've found with drivers all over the years, that somewhere between 20 and 30 pounds, depending on how wet the track is, obviously super duper heavy Queensland rain, you can go up closer to 30 pounds. And then if it's just sort of some Melbourne drizzle and it's cold winter, solid wet conditions, you might be closer to your 20, 25 pounds, but play around in the 20 to 30 pound range for your wet weather compound tires. So one of the really hard things to work out is when to change to your wet tires. Now them being a very soft compound rubber, they do get chewed out really quickly in the wet and in the dry, especially in the dry. So you can rip this tire to pieces in about five to 10 laps if the track gets really dry. Now, generally speaking, that won't happen in the middle of winter or late into the evening or the early mornings. If the track's wet in the morning, it's gonna stay wet because the angle of the sun is quite low. And especially in winter where we have even lower solar radiation, the track just stays wet all day and can be very greasy and cold. And that's when you can use your wet weather tires, even when the track is not so wet. Now the inverse of that is in the summer months when there's embedded heat into the track already, you might get a storm come through and wet everything down. Then it's a bit of a juggling act. That's when you have to be very fast on your feet to choose, oh, okay, the, there's standing water, we need a wet weather tire. But then you're watching the, the race before yours and it looks like the guys on the slicks, if there's any, are starting to move to the front. Okay, that's when you're gonna pull those wet weather tires off again and put the slicks back on and just deal with sliding around a little bit on, on some wet, uh, wet conditions on slick tires. So when you wanna change to wet weather tires is early in the morning, late in the evening, in the winter, and as soon as it starts drizzling and going to heavy rain. Okay, so some of the other very easy changes to make when it starts raining. So this works on both slicks in the wet and when you've got wet weather tires in the wet is moving your front wheels out. On the stub axle on the front of the car, traditionally in the drive would be running say, like a 15 mil or maybe a 25 millimeter spacer. So in the wet weather conditions, take the nut off and put all the spaces on the inside and move your front wheel out as far as you can. This really helps with this, the turning in and the twisting of the, sh of the chassis. On the subject of twisting the chassis, when you add the front bar, it makes the front of the car very active. So when you turn the steering wheel, everything is, is rigid in the front of the car and you're really gonna get a lot of jack in the back of the car, which is critical in the wet to get the rear wheel off the ground to get you around those corners when they're understeering in the slippery conditions. Now, obviously you can go too far with these things and you'll get some monster jack and it's too far and your lap times will suffer. But generally speaking, you wanna add a lot more front end grip slash steering in the wet weather conditions. Now, if you wanna get more complex with your wet setup, you can start to add caster and camber. Now we do cover this in another video. That link will be in the description below. And the reason why you wanna add a lot of caster and sometimes change the camber too, but more on that in a minute, is I like to add the caster to my carts in the wet because it really helps to 
make the cart jack again, you know, you're adding more steering because the carts slip so much on the way into the corner and it always seems to cost me lap time and speed. So I always put the most amount of steering in that I can in the cart in the wet, especially when it's really heavy. Now, as for the camber, uh, traditional thinking is crazy positive camber to help it get into the corner, but then you can get a lot of oversteer as well. So I like to sort of leave my camber maybe sort of neutral, sometimes go a little bit of negative camber with the wet weather tires, but if you do have slick tires on in the wet, you can add a lot of positive camber and that will help the cart steer into the corner as well. So in the wet, the corner speeds obviously go down substantially to the dry. There's nowhere near the grip available for the carts to turn the corners. So if you go at dry race pace into a corner, there's a good chance you're not gonna make it out the other side. So with the lower corner speeds, we're gonna make a few adjustments to the gear ratio. Now, if you've got a 125 engine, some of the easiest gear ratio changes can be simply going to a smaller front sp sprocket on your clutch drum. So if you're on an 11, you can grab yourself a 10 tooth front clutch drum and just slip that straight on. And then that way, the engine is gonna accelerate off those corners a lot faster from a lower speed. And also too, you're braking a little bit earlier on the straight, so your terminal speed at the end is not as critical. Now this doesn't apply for all tracks and all drivers, but if you're new to driving in the wet, this is gonna be a, a really big game changer. So add some more teeth or increase your gear ratio. So with the increased water in the air or the humidity, obviously it's raining, so humidity is close to 100%, if not it is, uh, you can lean out your carburation to get the engine really cracking at the end of the straight and to stop it loading up off the corners. So if you have a float style carburetor like a Delorto off the Rotax, you can adjust the float level maybe half a millimetre less for the wet. Now we do cover this in depth in some of our tutorial videos on Delorto Carbies, and you can go check those links out in the description below as well if you haven't already. If you've got an IAMI engine or a Tillotson style carburetor, hopefully you're running a lambda sensor and you can lean out the engine on the fly by turning the jets down maybe five minutes especially on the low speed jet because you're going to be off the throttle for so long and also too as you're coming out of the corners the engine doesn't have the load on it like it does in the drive because there's so much slip between the rear wheels and the track so you can lean out your low speed jet now be careful you can't just turn the jets off altogether you can only lean it out a few minutes because if you do or what i've experienced before is if you lean it out too much, the cart will start to bog or hesitate off the corner because it just doesn't have enough fuel to accelerate. So lean your carburation out a tiny bit for the wet. So another thing you can do for your engine for a bit of longevity is get yourself an air box cover. This one will slide straight on to your IAMI X30 and KA100 air box and it just stops bulk water from going down through the intake tubes of the carburetor. Failing that, if you don't have one of these, you can get yourself just a bucket from your local hardware sto store drill in a couple of holes and you can zip tie that to your chassis and your seat maybe and that will stop same thing the bulk water from just going straight into the inlet tubes of your airbox and filling it up with water before it can drain out okay so the last few things i recommend to do for when you're driving in the wet is after you finish driving okay so there's going to be a lot of water going through the engine we know that that's fine so pull off the airbox and dry out the air filter they'll get sometimes uh, the water and the, the oil mixed together and make like a white paste. So you can just degrease all that. You can take your air filter home and wash it out and dry it out. And then also too, what we like to do is just start the engines up on the stand just to dry out any water that's been sitting in the engine, if at any at all. And then you can take your carburetor off and give that a service. Now we've got carburetor service videos for Rotax, IAMI, and also to Vortex Mini Rock. You can click any of those links in the description below or if you're following our channel, they're all there online under the little subheadings too for each of those engine categories. The last thing I'd probably recommend is to dry the cart off with some WD-40, some dry rags, a little bit of compressed air, and then go around and lube all the bearings and all the steel bolts in the Allen key heads. Sometimes water will sit in there and the bolts will start to rust. So go around with some WD-40 and squirt all the bolts down so you don't get some rust. Okay, so that's what I use and recommend for the wet for me and all my guys. So go to the track and practice these things. Now practice is still the key. The driving in the wet is no different to driving in the rain. You still need to practice a lot 
actually it's very different to driving in the dry driving in the rain but you need to practice a lot it only rains every i don't know one in a hundred days when you're at the circuit but the guys that have practiced a lot they're the best in the wet it doesn't matter how good you are in the dry if you don't practice in the wet you're going to be behind the eight ball try those things if you find them helpful please consider giving us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. You can subscribe to our channel. You can turn on those pesky notifications. Go to our amazing website, buy yourself a t-shirt. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.